Hi guys, uh, welcome back to uh, episode 3. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about um, splitting the pack, um, just to give you sort of, again, options. Um, if you haven't watched my first two videos, um, check them out. Uh, I'll try and put the link in the description uh, for episode 1, which was the introduction really, um, and the break. There's some, certainly some good content on you know attached as in, in the link description uh, for players that I play with so be sure to give them a check out um, the second episode was long shots and getting that position on that first colour to, to leave yourself an option of either splitting the pack or getting on the additional loose reds that sort of thing so you know go and, go and check those videos out guys and, and, and again leave a, leave a like or a comment and, and constructive comments would be preferred <laughs> don't get me wrong again I'm not um, confessing to being the best player at this game because I can assure you I am not the best player at this game um, not just the people I play with in Discord but the people who play in online tournaments they are very very good players and they have wiped the floor with me many a times I can assure you um, but again get involved guys um, leave leave me your comments and let's, uh, let's crack into this one and see if we can get a, a good split <clears throat> And, and get in this position to make a sizable break, shall we? So what I've done is I've played my long red. Um, I've come off the top cushion parallel with the black, as we talked about in episode two. Um, and I'm in the what I feel is the perfect position to go into the pack. I'm level with the black parallel with the top cushion. Um, so let's line that black up, which we think is going to go in. I missed a couple of reds in the last episode, but. Uh, Try and forget about them. Now that's that. That is a, how it, the chances are it's going to be set up when you first get it. So what you can see at 50% is it's going to hit that bottom right and red. So if anything, it is going to nudge reds out. For me, I feel you can be a little bit more aggressive than that. Um, so what I tend to do is tend to ramp the power right up as much as I can. 98% gives you a slightly wider arc. If you put it at 100, it does dip a little bit, but you know it's still quite quite a large area to stop it in now the advantages you've got here guys is that the blue line hits the second red in from the right at the back of the pack so you've got a little bit of an option here to put a bit of top spin on it which is what you want to do because you want to drive the white ball out of the pack you do not want the white to stick in the reds if it sticks in the reds you may be lucky and get a position on the red that will get you down to a cutter but in my experience you will fail at getting the next red um, over 50% of the time now don't get me wrong this shot is not always going to guarantee you perfect position there, there is an element of luck at this but what you're trying to do is understand what the white's going to do when you've played your shot so for me I'll be looking at putting probably that much topspin on it and that much of an arc ignore the fact that the white, the blue line is going near the, the middle pocket because the reds are going to stop it obviously um, but you want to be able to do this so that the reds split in a way and the white ends up open and possibly on blue, yellow, green even the pink depending on where the pink moves and possibly the black so um, give that some thought um, and, and, and sort of understand that the white ball needs to be in as open position as possible to give yourself a chance of getting on a colour so let's give that a try hopefully we can get the black in and not miss be embarrassing um, so let's give that a try quickly right that would be unfortunate if we were to knock anything else in but as you can see guys <coughs> the reds are absolutely split up as good as you could probably hope now the options you have here are they're phenomenal really I mean there's not many things that you can't do it's always worth giving it a quick scan over on the colors guys just to see what goes what doesn't because the red that you pick next will determine the color that you choose and if it doesn't go well then you're in a bad position aren't you um, so don't be shy of having a quick look around the table yeah so you, so you can see that the blue goes there but what you've got to remember with the blue goes is I would like to guess that that doesn't respot but it's really hard to say and the fact that the pink spot's available and so is the brown it would respot on the pink spot that helps you in a way because that frees the pink into this pocket 
I know it doesn't look like it from that angle, but if you're coming from the other side of the table, that pink would go. So, you know that the blue goes, but it only goes in the left middle. And you know that this red goes. Albeit, you'd have to put it at dead weight. Now, when you say dead weight, what do you mean? Well, if you scroll the power all the way back until the object ball line starts to fade away see you can see that's going to fall short of the middle pocket what you want is you want the guts of that line to finish on the bag like that so what you're saying is at dead weight the arc of the pocket will grab it and drag it in yeah now the only issue with this shot is is that you have to roll forward you have to follow the red slightly so what you want to do is you want to put a bit just top the white now and I'd like to say that you'll see the blue line appear within the yeah see the blue line just starting to appear now that blue line is going to appear now don't be fooled guys that white ball will not necessarily stop at the end of that blue line because you're putting top on it it, it exaggerates the distance that the white ball travels so there's a strong possibility that you could follow it in so what I would tend to do is just hold off slightly And just roll it in from there yeah and if you do that the chances are and depending on how confident you are that the white ball would finish sort of here and if you're really brave you could take the blue on but what I would recommend is that it leaves you almost a straight yellow yeah and then with the straight yellow that you're looking at there you've got a red over the corner pocket you've got another three three reds left of the black which you know, if, if if you wanted to take a shot to nothing on, you could take the top one of those three. Um, don't think or believe that these reds pass each other. They don't. So you have another option. Yeah. So just give that some thought, guys, when you play your split. Um, and then you're in this position. Because it's all about leaving yourself an option for the next ball. You do not want to be chasing the white in this position. If you chase the white in this position, you will end up um, running out of position, ending up playing shots to nothing all the time, and eventually they will catch up with you. You will miss, and then you will lose the frame, um, especially against the good boys that are currently currently knocking in tens like they're going out of fashion online. Um, so give that some thought. So let's try that a different way. Um, we can play this slightly different. So if we if we line that red up, a black up, hopefully we'll get it again. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Two out of two. Um, cramp the pressure right up, so you're right up 97. Now you could just play this plain ball and hope that the, the right hand side of the second red in from the right that you're hitting, so in between basically the last two reds on the right at the bottom of the pack, is enough for the white to, s to skip off of the pack, still split them enough, and give you an opportunity. So let's give that a try. okay if anything that is slightly better the reason why that's slightly better is because all of the reds are split and not they're not covering as each other as much as they were previously my only fear with that shot guys is that the white is in a stronger position and a much better chance of ending up in the center of this table here now that could have become touching one of these reds and leave us in a bit of a poor position um, yes it's worked out better than the last break because it gives you that option and it gives you that option to just again if you take the power right off the, that red's not reaching right now but the blue line now is touching the cushion so the the white ball will touch the cushion start to come off now so you've got a picture of that now guys is that that white is going to bounce off that top cushion already I'd imagine it's slightly nearer the cushion than the red now that red's gone in that white is probably bounced up and past the existing red that you're currently hitting so I would recommend that you don't hit it harder than probably 13 and a half percent on that that should bring you up parallel with the black or if not slightly higher than it from the top cushion so then that gives you a chance to play the black and get on any of those reds yeah so that's one option um, the other option you have which is slightly tougher is that one but to be fair you're not guaranteed position on any color um, the obvious answer for me guys is this one and I'll tell you why 
everybody thinks oh yeah let's get on the black there's a chance of a massive break my biggest break so far that's fine but remember breaks don't win your frames um, outscoring your opponent does so for me I always think frame first um, so you want to be in a position where if you take that red on dead weight remember that the, the object ball line will finish faint on the pocket when it finish faint on the faint on the pocket it is level with the pink yeah um, now with it being level with the pink that gives you another option you've got a red down here on the bottom left corner pocket which you can just hold where the red is and pop the black after you can pop the pink and then um, sort of move up towards the red by the blue and pop the pop the red in the same pocket as you put on this first red and then leave yourself a blue um, or a yellow um, because the pink will obviously be out of commission for a while because it'll be respotted um, you've got the red below the pink slightly to the left um, there is a massive massive amount of options there guys yeah so give that some thought when you're playing shot um, let's give this another try now I see people do this and then <sighs> It works. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, and again, I'm not suggesting for one minute that I know better than than they do, because I can assure you guys they are very, very, very good players, um, and it's just the way they prefer it, and this their experience and what they've achieved so far. So you know, don't don't knock them for it. They they are they are really really good players. Um, now you can see that white is going to hit the reds. <coughs> for me my only concern with this is the white comes back towards the top cushion now because you're playing it with so much power if the spin and the angle off the reds comes at the side, left side cushion level with the black there's a strong possibility that the white will go across the table and towards the corner pocket you don't want to give yourself an opportunity where the white is in danger of going in off um, I ain't saying it will that's just my opinion um, you may have a better reason for it or you, you know you can justify it better than I can I don't know but it's just my preferred shot um, so let's give this a try and let's check the result well the white didn't come off at an angle and go back towards the cushion and it is left them again plum absolutely plum the only real downside is the three reds that are tied up on that side cushion but pff, let's be fair if you to pick off all the loose ones you ain't going to need them are you you're not going to need them to win the frame um, so that is an option and that is an option with uh, the white finishing in a very relatively good position to pop the black um, and then you can pff, you can choose whichever red you want to get onto there um, I would imagine that would be my first choice just giving it a quick glance over let's have a look yeah because you see now you could play that one now that red's not quite reaching probably not going in either um, right that's dead weight you could run that but the trouble is with that you've only got the green um, don't believe the pink passes Mm, see you don't want to be leaving yourself in I mean that might that dead weight that might just grab the edge of the middle pocket and drop in but you don't want to leave yourself a tough second shot do you you want to leave it so you've got the perfect um, position and again this one is another obvious choice um, again remember guys that's not reaching the pocket it's got full top on it because you're reaching it's with the rest and it's over a red so you're automatically going to get top on it if you want to put bottom on it you have to lift the queue up by pushing the directional pad up um, so you know if you drop it all the way down it puts the top back on it so once that red has stopped short and the white will finish near the cushion that's no touching the cushion the red might drop there but I would like to think that you don't want to do that because you don't want the white on the cushion anyway so let's just top that up I would have suggested to about 11 that means the white will bounce off the top cushion and finish parallel or slightly above the black which is what you want because if you just roll that black in the chances are it would be really really difficult to not finish on another red alright guys um, so give that some thought when you're playing your shot um, with regards to other options I mean 
you could be really risky and just put some bottom on it just so that the red just so that the white comes off and finishes near the left corner uh, left cushion I just think you should just go all in on this shot it's the safest option now you will guys you will have reds drop at the same time and it will be a foul and you will leave your player your opponent in but if you want to continue your break and stay in control you have to take that risk um, so let's just try that with just half the bottom again effective you've got options um, that red doesn't go that red goes in the bottom co corner bottom yellow co pocket um, but again my obvious choice would be this one and probably dead weight or just slightly past let's have a look now what you do is if you set that so that the blue lines what you think is will get you the blue you can see that the blue doesn't go yeah so what you want to do is roll past and look at taking the green um, but don't worry about that green because that if you take the green that gives you the red on the right hand side of the table um, if you screw back you can screw back to sort of between the yellow and the blue just slightly favoring the yellow side and then you can play the red by the blue into the top right uh, top right corner uh, the black pocket so again you have another option guys yeah think about that shot w when you're taking it I see a lot of people um, just play the nearest red because it's the easiest that's great you know you get that next red but you don't want to be fighting for a colour and running out of position um, so you know give that, give that some thought um, thanks for watching guys uh, this is the end of this video now um, if you want to leave me a comment and subscribe that would be really really helpful again I am new to this guys it might not be the greatest content but give it give it a like if you can and, and post me any constructive comments and I'll, and I'll happily help any of you guys out if, if you know if you if you think you need it um, and I will be looking at doing some videos and, and playing against some of you guys um, you know I value all your feedback it'd be really helpful so that's it for that video guys, I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers, bye bye.